Up next on The Reveal. Terminal 911. Well, it feels like forever when you're sitting there watching your loved one die in front of you. Why potentially life-saving medical aid is not allowed at one of the world's busiest airports. I'm going to use words you don't like. Plus, the secret recordings. I love you. I will continue to care about you whether you talk to me or not. Listen to the tapes obtained by The Reveal that have a DA under investigation and suspended from office. <laughs> then, talking about trauma. We talk a lot about uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress. I say, let's look at post-traumatic success. How a new push for civil rights is surfacing decades-old pain and what we can do about it. From our Midtown studios in Atlanta, the reveal begins now with our multi-Emmy and National Mural Award-winning team of investigators. Welcome to The Reveal. I'm Chief Investigator Brendan Keith. A desperate 911 call from the parking lot of Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport has exposed a deadly weakness in the airport's emergency response system. The reveal discovered that 911 dispatchers at the world's busiest airport aren't allowed to provide CPR instructions or offer any other life-saving medical advice over the phone. 911, what is the location of your emergency? I'm at the Hartsfield Airport parking lot. My husband has passed out. He stands up from the car and just spits out the words, something's wrong. Hey, hold on, let me get airport please on the line. Thomas? Thomas? He took three very loud gasps of air and never breathed again. LA Airport Communication. I need an ambulance in the parking lot, please. My husband has passed out and I can't get him conscious. Okay, where are you? What? D60. D60 where? What parking lot are you in? The Delta side. Let me go ahead and get the ambulance started for you, okay? Hey, sorry. Said he had a pain in his chest and he has an aortic aneurysm repair. I can't even tell if he's breathing anymore. Yeah, he's gasping for air. Airport Communications to Engine 32, Med 4. Respond to the South Economy parking. For Tom Lawson, husband, father, retired Marine, Atlanta's airport would be his final destination. You have to be blind to not realize that someone is really leaving when they stop breathing. And if you don't get here soon enough, he will never breathe again. You say you have a feeling he just left you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to update them with that information. We'll just hold on until the paramedics get there, okay? I can't find a pulse in his neck. I'll update them with that information. He's fine. He fell down? No. Hi. Oh, you say he's gone? Yes. Well, the paramedics isn't there. Clayton County first answered Ruth Lawson's 911 call and transferred her to the airport's own 911 center within 47 seconds. Four oh, minutes in, the airport's ambulance reported a mechanical problem. Delayed mechanical 1047. 11 minutes in, the ambulance was blocked by a security gate. Then the ambulance missed the entrance to the economy lot. Should we go back around? Yeah, you have to go all the way back around and come back in on the far side. No breathing. Oh. And you're in the South Economy? Yeah, right next to 60 D. Patient contact, 1100 hours. The airport's advanced life support fire engine arrived 17 minutes and 40 seconds after Ruth Lawson first dialed 911. Copy CPR in progress, time is 1105. CPR in progress, 22 minutes after Ruth first called for help. Well, it feels like forever when you're sitting there watching your loved one die in front of you, lying on the ground waiting for help. In the middle of the busiest airport in the world. Had Tom Lawson collapsed here on this grass airstrip in Flowery Branch close to his home, then Ruth Lawson would have been given pre-arrival instructions by the 911 operator, including CPR that she could have used to try to save her husband's life while the ambulance was still on the way. That's because every 911 operator and dispatcher here in mostly rural Hall County is trained and authorized to use emergency medical dispatch. Listen carefully, I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions. Pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second and two inches deep. One, two, two three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep pumping. No, he's got a pulse. He's breathing. He's breathing now? He's breathing. He's got a pulse. Instead, at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, this is what Ruth Lawson heard while her husband was dying before her eyes. 
And how long have you been together? Over uh, 30 years. I'm sorry, I missed your name. My name is Mayoshi. Okay, that's an interesting name. There. <laughs> it is a it's a Japanese name. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a military brat, um, and my mom didn't travel. My parents didn't travel. I was supposed to be born a boy, but I was born a female, so my mom had a male name, but she was watching a sitcom, and one of the housewife's name was Mayoshi, and that's how I got her name. Okay. <laughs> and how's your husband doing? I'm trying to find a pulse. Okay, has anyone entered? Again, what a cardiac call sounds like at a 911 center with emergency medical dispatch. Listen carefully and I'll tell you how to do chest compression. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Okay, I got it both of them. Okay, pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second and two inches deep. One, two, two three, three, four. four. You start breathing. One. He two. is breathing. He start breathing. And at the airport's 911 center without EMD. Are you from here? Not originally, but yeah. I know you're trying to make small talk. I'm just being patient. I know. I just want to make sure you remain calm. Do you have any emergency medical dispatchers? Not with our team. Gus Hudson runs the airport's centralized command and control center. We do not do EMD here, he wrote in an internal email after we asked for the airport's list of medically trained 911 dispatchers. Do you give any pre-arrival instructions for medical calls? No, we don't. We rely on our EMS team to give those instructions. We give the call to them. They respond as quickly as possible and provide all the medical advice and the medical services that are needed. But Atlanta Fire and EMS assigned to the airport don't give instructions en route to 911 callers either. They can't do anything to help until they get to the scene. Is 22 minutes a, a good response time from the first 911 call to doing CPR? Well, again, it depends on the factors surrounding the time. Uh, our EMS response tries to get here as quickly as possible, so I couldn't tell you if 22 minutes was a good response time, I could tell you that they responded as quickly and as efficiently as they could. You do have some people who are CPR certified on your staff, right? Uh, we have a lot of people that are CPR certified on the staff. Uh, it was a requirement of the city at one time that uh, all city employees get CPR certified. And can they give CPR instructions over the phone? No, they cannot over the phone. They're not trained to provide CPR instructions over the phone. I don't think the 911 operator knew what to do with me. But she did know what to do. The airport 911 operator was an emergency medical dispatcher until six months before Tom Lawson died in the parking lot. She was the emergency medical dispatch manager at Fulton County 911, where she co authored a comprehensive study confirming the efficacy of medical pre arrival instructions. She could have helped, she just didn't have the tools. She could not have helped here because we don't have in the EMD program here. So she's not authorized to provide those type of instructions. What she did do was use her training as best as she could to keep Ms. Lawson as calm as possible while EMS was en route. If that 911 operator had said, I want you to do this, this, and this, and do CPR, would you have done it? I would have attempted. You do so much good for so many people through your entire lifetime, and then the system fails you, it's unacceptable. I can no longer live in the residence that I'm in because of the incident. It's that emptiness, isn't it? Well, the house is too big. It needs a family. The airport has immediately reversed course. Just two days after we first aired this story on 11 Alive, Hartsfield Jackson actually got bids from companies to train all of their dispatchers with those medical pre-arrival instructions. And the city of Atlanta has posted new jobs for emergency medical dispatchers. He was in charge of pursuing justice. Does I work for you? I'm married, you're married. Hear the secret recordings of a district attorney pursuing his coworker and how that landed him on the other side of the law. A sitting Georgia district attorney could face prison time after a grand jury indicted him on bribery charges earlier this year. Some of the evidence involves conversations secretly recorded by one of his employees, but we got a hold of those recordings and are sharing some of that evidence on TV for the first time. Inside the Paulding County Courthouse, a district attorney turns up the volume of a classical composer. I have never seen the ballet. I love the music. While seeking the attention of a young woman. Hey boss, you wanted to see me? 
They are Jamie White, a victim's advocate, and her boss, DA Dick Donovan, nearly twice her age. Starting in 2017, White secretly recorded hours of conversations I would be more attempting to, to document January sexual harassment, evidence that could now put the county's top be prosecutor be behind bars. I'm very much aware that it's, there are sometimes you and I want to talk about things that probably are not suitable for the workplace. This past February, the Georgia Attorney General indicted Donovan on multiple felonies, one of them for false swearing or lying under oath. In May 2019, Donovan provided a sworn affidavit claiming he never told White he was in love with her. But listen to what White recorded months before. I'm going to use words you don't like. I love you. I will continue to care about you whether you talk to me or not. I mean, if you don't want me to tell you I love you, I'll stop doing that. Does that make you uncomfortable? I just don't think it's right. Why? Because I work for you. I'm married. You're married. It's despicable. It's disgusting. We asked Ashley Wilcock for her legal analysis of the case. She's a Metro Atlanta attorney and Judge Pro Tem, not affiliated with the case. What a creep. Who is this guy? Who says that to somebody that works for them? That's creepy. In the same affidavit, the district attorney told another attorney under oath, I have never suggested we have sex. I have never offered to have sex with her. Here's Donovan in his own words. I said I was in good health. I'm in perfectly good health. Everything still works. I don't mind telling you everything still works, and I'm not out of practice. I can't think of any experience I would relish or cherish more than to make love to you. Oh, God, gross, gross, because he's absolutely talking about having sex. In October 2017, police arrested White for shoplifting at the Cedartown Walmart. According to Donovan, one of her first calls from jail was to him. I'm Nick Donovan. I'm the guy that came and called to try to fix it. They did, as far as I can tell. The attorney general claims what Donovan tried to fix was her arrest. According to the indictment, Donovan attempted to bribe a Cedartown prosecutor into dropping White's shoplifting charge in exchange for demissing charges against one of the prosecutor's clients. Wilcott says even if White didn't ask Donovan to do it, it could still be considered bribery. Because the favor is for him. Whether it's helping someone else or not, it's for him. He's the one that's getting that currency, and the currency is help this woman out for me. Donovan and White declined to be interviewed for this story, but there's something else in the audio recordings that's problematic for the DA. He admits to lying to other employees. I told her something I have not told you, I've not told anybody. I, frankly, I lied. Do you not feel like you have a lot to lose? <laughs> yeah, but the answer is yes, but I'm crafty enough to avoid that, you know, just careful enough to avoid that. I would be Wilcott says that admission damages the DA as a prosecutor in the courtroom. It absolutely throws all credibility out the window. How does that work when it gets to trial? Who knows what evidence is going to be hidden or not revealed? It's a slippery slope. That's where our system, our justice system can break down and fail. You can't lie about things like this and break laws and get away with it. White settled her sexual harassment claim with the state and the county for about $300,000. Governor Kemp suspended Donovan from office in February. The DA still keeps his salary while not working. No trial date has been scheduled. It's haunting and it keeps happening. Ahead, a closer look at the trauma of seeing so many black men die on camera and how we can get help. It's about giving people the permission to say it's okay not to be okay. Now let's honor your feelings and making sure you're giving yourself what you, what you need. For more on these investigations or to submit a tip to the Reveal team, text REVEAL to 404-873-9114 or email us at thereveal at 11alive.com.
A year ago, the deaths of George Floyd and Rayshard Brooks forced Atlanta to take a hard look at racial justice. But now we're just starting to understand the impact of witnessing that trauma. 11 Alive's Naima Abdullahi takes a broader look at the multi-generational repercussions. No justice! No Teardrops have no color. That's what hurt so much. This was an assassination. As they roll from the eyelids of hurt family members. My son was executed. It, it's just not right. But the color of their loved one's skin reignites generational trauma deeply woven into the fabric of American history. Emma Till. Yeah. Wow. He was the first George Floyd. Beyond the 65 years separating their untimely deaths, both an example of black trauma showcased for the world to see. I am exhausted just like everyone else in this country. Deborah Watts, Emmett Till's cousin, parallels the pain of the past and today. We know that in the realities of this world, uh, it could happen any time to any of us. How much can we endure? I don't know. After 14-year-old Emmett Till was lynched, his mother left the casket open, showing the world the brutality of racism. Decades later, the pain is amplified by the endless stream of violent videos. Emory University's Counseling and Psychological Services Department defines racial trauma as a distress reaction of racially oppressed groups to harmful experiences and real or perceived acts of discrimination. We talk a lot about um, PTSD, right? Post-traumatic stress. I say, let's look at post-traumatic success. Dr. Courtney Alston, mental health professional and researcher, says the impact of racial trauma is similar to PTSD. It's about giving people the permission to say it's okay not to be okay. Now let's honor your feelings and making sure you're giving yourself what you, what you need. She says turning tragedy into triumph is possible if the healing process balances between building your resilience and knowing when you've reached your limit of resiliency. Understanding what you need in terms of your well-being are all super important. Deborah Watts says racial trauma runs on a generational cycle, meaning that there were many Emmett Tills before Emmett. Faces and names we don't recognize, but a pain that lives on. Processing uh, this kind of pain and the repetition of it is it's difficult. But, you know, people of faith, I think, find their way forward with relying on faith. We hope that our young people know that once tragedy hits, they have to move. They have to keep moving and moving forward. Hands up! Dr. Alston says moving forward means giving yourself grace, patience, and unplugging when necessary. Being part of a movement doesn't mean you can't take a moment to yourself. And when you're thinking in terms of optimistically, right, you understand that there's good things that can also come, right? Bad things do happen, right? We, we understand that, but it's also about the optimistic outlook in terms of that. We are where Atlanta speaks, and that includes uplifting every voice. Check out our other Voices for Equality stories on 11alive.com. Thanks for watching The Reveal. You can find all of our episodes on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time for The Reveal.